Hi there, this is a quick demo to show you how to set up SSH keys. Setting up SSH keys allows you to log in using Secure Shell or SSH without using a password. It also allows you to transfer files doing the same thing without using a password. In this case, I'm starting from scratch on a Fedora machine. If I was to show you, uh, you'd see there's no .ssh directory. This is the directory that uh, SSH uh, will look for keys and uh, other associated files by default. The command to set up SSH keys is SSH keygen. Now, there are a number of options in terms of key length and protocols and so forth. I'm not going to show you those just for the sake of keeping this demo simple. You can read the man page and it will tell you about them. The defaults are fairly reasonable, so for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to take the defaults. When I hit enter, it's going to ask me which file would it like uh, and directory would it like me to store my private key in. So I'm just going to take the default. And it's going to ask me for a passphrase. So if I want an additional password when I log in using SSH or transfer files using SSH above and beyond the, uh, the key, I can enter a passphrase. In this case, I'm going to hit enter for a blank passphrase, and again, and now my keys have been generated, both the private and public key. Now the private key, of course, you're going to want to protect. The public key you can use on remote machines to authenticate you logging in automatically. And the way you would do that, I'm just going to go into my SSH directory. You can create a file called authorized keys. In this case, because I'm starting from scratch, and I only have my public and private key, I'm just going to copy my public key into authorized keys. And so the content of my authorized keys file is my public key. Now, what I can do now is basically just double check the permissions. Now, SSH is very particular about the permissions. You're going to want to make sure that your private key is protected, as you can see. So only I have access to my, my private key and my public key, it's okay to be, to be visible. And the authorized key, it's okay to be visible as well. Um, in this case, because uh, when I'm logging in, it's going to need to be referenced and checked. Your home directory and your .ssh directory need to be a particular permissions. So in this case, I've got it uh, 700 or basically uh, read, write, and execute access to me, but not to anybody else. Now, if I've done it correctly, I can basically SSH to localhost, and I should not. Oh, yes, uh, the first time I do it, SSH keeps track of the fingerprint of the machine. This is a special key for that server, so it keeps track if somebody was to break into the server and mess around with it. Uh, certainly overwrite it with some other software, it would change the key. So this is a way of keeping track of the machine at the other end. Is the machine you think it is, and you're not uh, being fooled by IP spoofing or some sort of uh, traffic redirection. So in this case, I'm going to say yes, I trust that key, and I've logged in without a password. Now I'm going to log out and log back in just to show you. So subsequent attempts to log in will not be prompted by a password. Now this is useful because I can also run commands remotely. Uh, I can copy files uh, without entering um, a username and password with SCP or SFTP or rsync over SSH. Or uh, what's really neat is something called SSHFS, which allows you to mount a file system over SSH. Uh, we have demo videos for all of these available on YouTube and on our website at fossilc.org. So uh, I hope you found this at least somewhat useful. If you did, uh, check out our website. Uh, check out the videos we got in YouTube and Vimeo. And Enjoy. Take care.